Good morning. It's Roland from East Marsh Shakers. Um, it's another Saturday morning and this is a uh, work day uh, on the homestead. We're going to do a, a number of different uh, uh, chores, tasks, projects, whichever way you want to take a look at it. So first up, uh, we're going to be heading across to um, the high tunnel and uh, putting up the the uh, chicken fence around the high tunnel, the front of the, the high tunnel, so that the chickens come, can come out on days like today where it's relatively benign. It gives them an opportunity to get outside, get a little bit of exercise, but also to uh, grub around in the uh, um, in the underbrush and uh, work at the area around the front of the, the high tunnel. And then we're going to go uh, right next to it and plant um, garlic. And so we're going to bring some um, triple mix, uh, which is right here, uh, along with us to amend the soil that's in the garden because the garden has had uh, a full load of, or a full uh, season of uh, growing. And so we're going to uh, add to the, uh, the nutrients that are in, in the soil, etc. Uh, make sure it's all ready and then I think we're going to be heading over here we have these piles uh, or these bags of uh, grass uh, leaves etc that we're going to be putting over this area here as a mulch we have to cover up the brooder that's been sitting out here for a bit uh, make sure that it's weather tight uh, so that's not going to be interfered with by wind snow rain everything that's coming um, in uh, our, our winters here in, in uh, central Ontario. And then we have all of the um, furniture, the deck furniture, etc., that's up on uh, the deck that we need to uh, put away and protect from uh, the winter weather as well. So we're going to get at all of those tasks and we'll bring you along with us so that you can see what we're up to. Um, it, it's kind of interesting that now that the, the weeds have died down and uh, we're starting to see um, some of the plants that we've actually put in for permaculture kinds of purposes starting to reappear. Um, so these are the elderberry plants. Uh, one two, three, and, oh, there's still holes in the ground. I just stepped in one. As those are from the pawpaws, and then there's the three from the uh, blueberries as well. Um, but we can also see the strawberry plants starting to reemerge. So there's a large strawberry plant there, and then we've got one, two, three, four, five, there may be more in that general area, but I can't see them right now. Six, seven, eight, nine, at least ten, maybe eleven uh, or twelve. There's another one there. Um, strawberry plants that are still alive. And we'll also have to uh, cut down the uh, the remnants of the asparagus that are up to the ground. All right, so let's get going and uh, take you along.
Hey, Trisha from East Marsh Acres. We're here on a work day on Saturday. Uh, the last Saturday in November, I think. No, next Saturday is. Anyways, but we're in November. It still hasn't snowed. And so, anyways, what we've tried to do today is uh, give an outside paddock to the chickens so that they can get out of the hoop house once in a while. So we'll open and close the door for them and uh, lock them lock them in normally, but just to give them some outdoor experience. So, since we had some hawk trouble in the fall, um, well, just, what, three weeks ago that, no, two weeks ago that we put them in the hoop house because we lost a chicken to a hawk, um, we are, so what we've done here is we've put our overhead protection system, which is these strings with CDs on them. So they're shiny, they shine in the sunshine. And now we put this netting over top. So we had it earlier, but it was a pain when we had to go in with the, with the uh, uh, chicken tractor all the time in our heads. But since this is going to be up permanently for the whole winter and the first part of the spring, we thought we'd give it a try. So yeah, so the hawks can't go in from the top and they do they'll get caught so um, at least it'll give the chickens a chance to get back into the into the um, hoop house for safety um, hopefully one would not um, swoop into the into the hoop house but I guess that's the chance we take we're not gonna we're just gonna give them a couple hours every day to kind of dig around and be outside so this is the, got the electric fence up and uh, all positioned. So hopefully um, we're good to go for these chickens and that they have a little bit of outdoor exposure, but not hawk exposure. So um, we're now getting ready to plant some garlic. So we need to do that in this row here and uh you're showing me okay yeah so roland is taking apart the garlic that i bought Close. Yeah. um so they're they're um organic garlic and uh, we'll plant them here um did you okay did you um fork it uh have not well i was going to do that before and then put the thing clothes on and then put the dirt on like anyways you've you've you gone a few steps ahead of head anyways we'll have to get them in the dirt um i think they're pretty it's pretty loose is it pretty loose yeah okay okay we're gonna try not to rod fork it <coughs> and plant it so here we go Okay, detailed description of what we're doing. So I'm just taking a uh, bulb tuber. I don't know exactly what they would be called. And I'm just pulling them apart. Probably a bulb because then these are clothes. Yeah, right. Okay. And then I just pull each one of the clothes apart so that you end up with a handful of clothes. And then what Trisha's doing Taking the individual cloves, making a hole in our 
wonderful soil that we built up over the last three years. Yeah. And she's just pushing the clove into the ground and then covering them up again. Covered in, up yet, in a but, bit. Yeah. But um, so each one of these cloves will now produce a bulb. A brand of, new bulb of garlic, of garlic next spring. And we'll harvest them somewhere around the end of June, beginning of July. And these are all hard neck um, garlic. garlic, which grows in this particular um, part of the neck of the woods. Do I need to get some more soil down there? Like it. I don't know how many. Just a little have. bit. Uh, probably another 15, maybe. So Trish is just pulling the last of the kale leaves out. She'll strip the frilly parts off, put them in a plastic bag, and put them in the freezer. And they'll be fine for when we pull them out and we put them into a dish that we call stumpolt which is uh, potatoes and kale. You, you threw the right, right wrong piece away. <laughs> right. um, and uh, I'll just give the ends to the chickens yep. who quite like it. So we put a steak. Here. You can see the, the top of the steak at the end of the uh, the row of garlic, one there. And then one at this end as well. Okay, we are going for some lunch. And after lunch, when we get back out here, we'll put the large salad tarp. There's one there and there's one up there, one for each of the two gardens. And uh, we will cover the expanse of the garden for the majority of the winter. The idea there is to cut off sunlight from uh, any of the uh, grass and weeds that you're actually seeing all over the place in the entire garden during the course of the winter and in the spring we should have primarily uh, clear ground to start working again that will build up into these beds one more time and uh, start planting for next year. Uh, we've been finding this methodology to work very, very well, uh, particularly for this ground. So uh, I've said it before, but I'll repeat. This ground is not particularly fertile at all. This entire field was created, was raised, uh, otherwise it'd be about the level, same level as the marsh across the road. Uh, but this uh, field was raised by putting all kinds of fill in into the space. And uh, these were just uh, patio stones that we put down uh, for the corners of the large 26 foot trailer that we lived in over the first winter uh, on this land. Uh, there's another one there. And the rest of it is basically rocks and brick and uh, there's dirt in between, sand, all kinds of stuff, but uh, it's not great growing soil by any stretch of the imagination. And as a consequence, we need to build it up all of the time. Um, so every year, we'll put a layer of compost right on top of the existing layers that we have in these long strips and uh, then that compost will be covered with some triple mix usually and then some kind of uh, ground cover as in straw or whatever that we actually have available uh, wood chips would do as well and uh, so we're we're creating these layers of beds that have lots and lots of nutrients in them I mean, take a look at, at the quality of the soil here. Very little in terms of stone. There's some, some uh, uh, gravel that, that has gotten in here, but for the most part, it's rich, dark soil that we've placed in here. Lots of organic material to actually uh, 
uh, decompose and provide nutrients back into the ground. Of course, the majority of plant life comes from the atmosphere. So it's taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and turning that carbon dioxide into sugars like fructose and uh, glucose. And then uh, we can refine that to uh, two glucose molecules. Uh, I'll show you the chemistry at some point, um, maybe, uh, if I remember. Um, anyways, uh, two glucose molecules will give a sucrose, which is table sugar, uh, the refined table sugar that we use. Um, which is not anywhere close to uh, as good from my perspective because the refining process removes a lot of impurities, uh, etc. that are actually uh, good for us um, and uh, it gives us this sugar rush that uh, is not very good for us at least that's what I'm told by the nutritionists. Um, anyways, I think that's going to take us to the end of this morning's work uh, we're going from lunch for lunch and some coffee, and uh, we'll be back out here this afternoon to finish things off. Talk to you soon. Bye.